Alrighty folks, welcome back to the 1 5th scale Pika Waco build series. Uh, this is part two where we're going to be starting work on the fuselage. Alright, so to start off the fuselage, we got to make some uh, sub-assemblies first, and that involves these cabane struts. Uh, we're going to sandwich the wire in between these two pieces of wood, and then glue these two pieces of ply to them. Make do those and get those ready. These two parts need to be glued together for the right thickness for this uh, part of the fuselage plan right here. And then these just need to be put together because they're going to go up front here. And uh, yeah, we'll get these all glued up and then we'll move on to the actual fuse. folks are probably wondering uh, what am I going to use to power this uh, Waco by plane and no it is not going to be a two-stroke as shown in the plan we are going with this beautiful FT 160 Gemini Yes, sir. That's right. We're going to put a really nice engine on this. I mean, it just feels fitting to put it on, you know, a biplane or a build like this. And for my subscribers wondering if this is the same engine off my big stick, you are right. <laughs> um, I do have another engine for this uh, plane, so it will not be totally grounded and it will still be flying. But it just feels more fitting to put this engine in a plane like this Waco. So anyway, yeah. That's what's going to power this baby, this beautiful OS FT-160 Gemini. Alrighty, so now that our pieces are drying, this here, uh, that, and the cabane struts, uh, we are now ready to move on the fuselage, which involves bending and shaping these sticks, which I went ahead and did off camera. You can see it uh, bends down on the end right there, uh, according to the plans right there. The stiffeners then go into place, and then we will go ahead and glue these. Uh, parts on and start uh, getting the assembly done on the fuselage. So well, let's get back on the time lapse. Alrighty, now that we have the outline of our fuselage crutch all pretty much assembled, um, we get to now put in a few formers, and that starts off with this modified F4B that goes right up front, uh, right here. Now this is the original one, and then we're going to line that up, and then we're going to install this one, I think, get it all situated, and then build up some fuel tank box parts. But anyway, yeah. That's the plan, get some fuselage formers on, and uh, yeah, we'll continue on with the fuselage.
All right, well, I think I finally got this landing gear figured out. Um, it's close enough that I think it will work in order to solder and bind it all together and all that sort of stuff. And I also added this 5 16th inch stringer to make this assembly hole all strong, and we are good to go there. So we are now ready to lay in all these formers here. As you can see, F8, F9, a second F9. Uh, these actually come first before F9, and then these, then 10, 11, 12, 13, blah, blah, blah. Um, this, as you can see, is a lot is actual thicker ply compared to the other ones, and that's because the stock tail wheel just goes on the rudder, but once again, that's not a scale. Or the, the tail wheel on the full scale Waco is much more on this right around this F14 former. So we make this out of ply and all that sort of stuff so it can actually resist or is strong enough to mount to because this thin balsa thing is something you don't want to mount to a tail wheel to. So that's why that is uh, hard or is really thick ply. So just want to mention that. But besides the point, let's get some formers on this fuselage. So we got fuselage formers all in place and they are looking really good and it is now time to put on just a few not all uh, bottom stringers just to support this structure here and then we're going to take it off and apply some forward sheeting that pretty much extends from here kind of curves up uh, let me see if i can yeah kind of like that right there sheet it insert our cabane struts and all that sort of stuff so Anyway, yeah, that's what's next up, so let's get to it. All right, well, we have the uh, bottom aft stringers in place and they came out really good. So while this was empty here, I did decide to mount my tail wheel mechanism, I guess. Uh, anyway, these are just two nitro engine beam mounts that I sawed off and drilled a hole through the bottom and top of them to house this wire that I got going on. And then to steer it, I plan to use that control arm up there. Uh, through the slot, I guess, I'll be, I mean, that's what I'm thinking. I don't see why not. And uh, I think it should work pretty well. So that's my tail wheel set up so far, and we'll go ahead and see if that works. And then sheet the front end, basically the bottom from here up to here, I think is how it works. I'm not sure there's templates 
that I have printed off so I can make these out of 332nd sheeting. But anyway, yeah, let's go ahead and insert our command struts and get the forward sheeting done. Well, I figured I ought to show you all or introduce all you folks to these two. Uh, if you see my shorts and all sorts of other videos, I, <laughs> uh, let's just say, annoy them quite a bit. But they put up with all my crap. But in return, they tell me what all I'm doing wrong on this. But anyway, uh, these are both brothers there, or both from the same litter. Uh, this is Cleco here, the gray one, and the yellow one here is Chet. Both super fun cats to have around. Uh, they put up with my shenanigans and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, these are my two kit builders, FA inspectors, I guess. <laughs> All right, well, we've got the cabanes and the forward sheeting all installed, and it's looking, well, not just the bottom forward sheeting, basically, which seemed to take forever because I had to cut it out, made sure it fit, and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, this took a while, but uh, finally got it, and uh, we're ready to go. So the cabanes are uh, in their place and ready to go. So looking good. Uh, pretty much next is stringing this whole thing Uh you know, where the formers are outlined, you know, put the stringers in and all that sort of stuff. So, well, let's go ahead and do that then.
All right, well, here's the fuse all stringered up, as you can see. And man, it feels like this thing has a whole heck of a lot of them compared to other models I've done. But to give the covering a nice ribbed effect, I guess this is as many as we need. <laughs> and then, as you can see, we've got the tailwheel on here. And I did that before I stringered this whole thing. So it would be a lot easier to get that servo arm on the rod, as you can see there. If I can get it to focus, maybe. Yeah, right there. See the clevis slightly there, and the bush rod is just thrown in there. It's not uh, secure or anything. It's just in there, so uh, it would be a lot easier to get it in now or before I stringered it. So that's the deal with that. And then, as you can see, we've got these top formers in place with the 5 16th inch square uh, keel, top keel. And pretty much the last steps that we got to do for this fuselage is put these top sheeting pieces on these two parts go together uh, this tapers in here with the curves you can see on the fuselage here so got to sheet that and then to give the bottom wing something to sit on uh, we put these pieces <laughs> together which these are 5 8 inch sheeting and they bend against the grain which I find strange but we have to get them in here and follow this F21 contour in order to get the bottom wing something to sit on. And it gives the fuselage kind of a finished look, I believe, because we got to put them on like right here. So that's what I understand it to be or what we have to do. And since these are uh, 5 30 second sheets that got to bend this way, which obviously isn't going to happen with just uh, steam or water alone, they're going to crack and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I'm going to try soaking them in this overnight and see how pliable they get. I've been told this stuff really makes balsa soft. So we're going to give that a try. We're going to let this stuff sit overnight and we'll see how malleable it is. So anyway, that's what's left on this fuse. So let's go ahead and get all that stuff done. So after letting these parts sit in the ammonia overnight, they're still not bendable enough for me comfortably. I mean, it did soften them up a lot uh, more than wood or more than steam and hot water would have ever done, but they're still not bending enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut new ones out and I'm going to make the grain go the other direction. Um, and that should help these bend a whole lot easier to uh, the shape that we need. Alright, so here is the fuselage, all uh, where it's at, all sheeted up pretty much. Uh, the top sheeting is done, and it didn't come out the greatest, unfortunately, but uh, I'm not too worried about it because it's going to get covered or covering over it anyway. So, and I can sand it and fill it and all that sort of stuff. And then, obviously, as you saw, we finally got the wing saddles uh, in their place right there. So, looking good. So the last thing I'm going to cover is putting these turtle deck formers on and then I'm just going to put in the top stringer because or the top keel I guess on each of these formers and the reason being is because I think it'd be a lot easier to route my servo push rods while I still have this open cavity you know do all this sort of stuff so uh, that's the plan anyway we'll see what happens but let's go ahead and get these rest of the formers on and uh, we'll finish up part two.
Alrighty, folks, I think that'll wrap it up for part two on the fuselage on this Waco project. Um, the top formers came out really nice, and we're ready to go there. So, in case you're wondering why there's no notches on this side of this former, it is because a simulated cargo or baggage door goes there. And I'm thinking about, and which is uh, balsa sheeting, and I'm thinking about actually making that operational, you know, like maybe putting hinges here or somewhere where it... Uh, uh, meets up flush and hiding all my switches and my onboard glow that I'm going to use uh, in this cargo area door. So I haven't fully decided on that yet simply because uh, I know this thing is going to want to be really tail heavy and you know that's just putting more stuff aft of where the CG goes. So I haven't fully decided on that yet. Uh, if you guys think it's a good idea go ahead and put that in the comments. Maybe it'll help me decide. We'll see. But anyway Pretty much the only thing that's left in this fuselage is we got to put these formers in place. There's one that goes here, and then this part that unfortunately is, I don't know, maybe I could use it, but it just seems too unusable to me. So I need to cut out a new one of those and all that sort of stuff. So that's the reason why I'm ending this uh, part right now as it is. But anyway, yeah, that's part two on the one fifth scale Waco project. Make sure you all hit subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss part three. We'll see you in the next one.